time it is. Marvin Devine. Hoover. Axel. And you know how we do. <laughs> I got enough water. If I don't have nothing else, I have enough water. You know? So, so you're cooking tonight, huh? Well, thank you. I'm glad you're cooking. Hold it. Are you making that, those healthy things again? Or are you making those, um, what is it, those uh, Reno meals and stuff? Come on, Al. They taste like cardboard. They don't have no flavor. I, I don't like it. Mm -mm. And if you come in for the 4th of July, please don't bring none of that stuff. Um... I mean, because we eat, you eat healthy and great all the time, but I just, not now. You know what I mean? I want something different, something else, or at least something with flavor. If you're going to be healthy, at least let it taste good or have flavor. You know, bring some, maybe, oh, they may, oh, they got a new uh, recipe with the shish kebab that we can put on the grill. Mm, that might have a possibility. I don't know. I think about it. I don't know. But, I mean, it's almost time. Oh, I see the clock over there. It's almost time for the show. So let let me let I we'll talk later or you can sit down and watch it with me. So I don't miss her. Mm -mm, not Lisa, not Lisa Baxter, not me. Because this is the Lisa Baxter show. Giving you the 
1-800-411-1411 in the kidney world. Hello, everybody. And how are you doing? Happy Sunday. Who can believe next week is the 4th of July? How about that? Well, I had to go to a youth resource center uh, uh, thing outside this week. And it was a it was all outside, you know, with tables and, you know, we were distancing and everything like that. And I mean, I got nice bags and stuff like that. I wanted to show you guys. See, this is nice. Isn't that nice? Mm -hmm. That's a nice bag. Uh, something for uh, the children. Uh, Max for the children, just their size. Isn't that something? That's nice. And even from the fire department, look at this. <laughs> they gave me an oven mitt. I thought that was really sweet. And let me see what else we got. We got a little bit of everything. I, now, this is this is, this stress thing is a can they cute? Look like a little fire extinguisher. Don't we got enough stress in our life? Please. Doing the shows is something else, but it's a blessing at the same time. But I tell you, you go through stuff. This is another water bottle I got. You know, guys, I've been collecting the water bottles. I probably can sell them. Oh, man, but I do love them, and I enjoy it, and I'll even share or give something away, you know. Um, you know, the baby was up here. This is the second car he left up here. This is um, the Children Aid Society, so maybe you want to be a foster parent or something in that uh, avenue. And this is the phone number right here. That's our resource for the day, 212-949-4905. And I will put it in the chat as well. Yes, 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 I will. And um, for our, uh, what do you call it? For our scripture for today is John, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son who shall ever should believe in him, should not perish, but have everlasting life. John 3 and 16. And I guess everybody knows that. So let's get the show on the road. Let's get it rolling and going. How about that? Let me introduce my guest. I got Pastor Nick Gentle. That's right. Mm -hmm. He's a double hero, a double donor. Oh, man, he's a, a double donor that gave two organs away. Who does that? This guy does. How about that? He has so much going on. He has um the compassion match. Um, uh, he has just a little bit of everything, but I'm gonna let him tell his own story. You know, he's out there in the field doing things, uh, blessing people, and uh, through his message with God and everything else, and with kidney stuff and getting somebody a kidney or a do some some kind of uh, uh, donors thing. So any type of organ that's needed, he's very helpful with that. But I'll introduce him right now. Come on, Pastor Nick. Praise the Lord. Woo! <laughs> I well, love that in peace. Praise the Lord. Yeah, amen. <laughs> awesome. I'm so glad to have you. Thank you. I know we had some difficulty trying to get on earlier and a little mishaps, but we won't let the devil get in that and mess amen. us up. So I am so glad to see you across from me or, you know, and everything and glad to have you here. Same here, so, sister. Thank see. you so much for having okay. me on the show. Fabulous. Mm, I know. Well, my first question to you, Pastor, is that um, what job did you do before you became a pastor or before you had started your uh, your business or, or what you were doing? Yeah, uh, many different jobs. Um, I've done retail. I've done vending machine attending. I've done security work. Uh, the primary job that I did was uh, security work. And then I moved into retail. Uh, but I have a long history, different kinds of jobs. So kind of the jack of all trades, the master of none in the work field. Oh, I'm sure you mastered something. I know <laughs> what you're doing now and the beautiful two gifts that you gave. You had to have mastered something from the master. How about that? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not mad at you. Well, listen, um, now I wanted to ask you. You, you, it's, it's hard out here trying to get somebody to uh, donate 
any organs because it's not an easy question to ask. It's not something uh, that easy to do. Um, maybe you could tell us how you was asked or um, what made you uh, do this twice? Great question and praise the Lord Jesus Christ. I, I love telling the story because I get to give him the glory, praise and honor for everything that I've done. Um, I'm just a vessel for his love, for his everything. Anything good that I do is because of him. So, but, you know, praise God. But really it was my faith in Christ. That was the driving force and what enabled me and empowered me. Um, really his spirit, the love that he shed abroad in my heart through his Holy Spirit, like it says in Romans 5, 5, um, is what compelled me, moved me forward because it took me 10 and a half years to donate my kidney. And so you, in that period of time, I went through a lot of ups and downs, uh, peaks and valleys, a lot of disappointment. I'd have a lot of doors that appeared to open and just as quickly as they appeared to open, they would slam shut. Um, but the Bible says, you know, that the Lord will open doors that no man can close. So that's what he did with me in 2019. It finally took place um, where every door was opened uh, and I donated altruistically. Uh, where I went into the hospital at Georgetown University Hospital in Washington, D.C., and I donated to someone that I didn't know. I still don't know them, still haven't had the pleasure of meeting them. Lord willing, that'll happen. If it doesn't, it doesn't change anything, and I wouldn't change anything. Um, and I was able, also able to get a voucher for someone in what's called the Advanced Donation Program through the National Kidney Registry so that they could get a kidney, and they got a kidney four months later. Um, and then a year went by after I donated and I got tested to make sure that everything was in working order with my one remaining kidney. And it was. And so I told my friend who had liver disease for 10 years that because uh, he the right before I went in for the kidney transplant surgery to donate to the person that I still have yet to meet. Um, he got put on the transplant list and I told him, you know, I'm, I'm going to donate my kidney. This is something that the Lord has called me to do uh, for his glory, for his praise and honor and to help other people in need. But if, you know, in a year's time, you still need someone to get tested for you, I'll be happy to do that. So the year came and went. People did come forward. They did get tested for him, um, but no one was approved. Um, and so once I was cleared to move forward with the testing phase, um, I did everything that you have to do. Uh, you know, uh, went in for an evaluation, uh, liver donation uh, or liver transplant surgery. The evaluation for that has things in common with the kidney transplant surgery, but there obviously are differences. It's a different surgery. It's a more, uh, more invasive surgery. It's an open surgery where they open you up. And for me, it was just a midline incision which is how they used to do uh, kidney transplant surgeries. Now they do it laparoscopically with like three small slits and then they blow you up and then they go in with a lighted tube. And so a lot less invasive, but, but yeah, that that's basically what happened is, you know, it was the Lord that opened every door for me to donate the kidney after 10 and a half years of going to different hospitals, connecting with different people, uh, things not working out. And, um, I, I can say this is that in two, 2018, after a year of getting tested at two different facilities um, for a woman named Trina Faison, um, I was approved. And then within two weeks as a, and to, to join her in the pair kidney exchange program at Georgetown, not to directly donate to her because I'm a positive. She's all positive. because I couldn't donate to her directly, but I got paired with her. So after a year of getting tested at Temple University and then Georgetown University, um, and finally getting approved in December of 2018, after making a couple of trips to Georgetown, she gets a call from, from Temple. And we had major problems with Temple. So this was the irony of the whole situation. She ended up getting a kidney through Temple. And I was not a part of the equation because it was, it was a, a direct donation. I didn't, they didn't need me for anything. So I was all excited. This was about two weeks after I had been approved after over a year of testing at the two facilities. And I was at, um, a family get together it was New Year's Eve. My phone was off. When I came back home, I charged it. I turned it on and I saw a text message from her saying, brother Nick, you know, I got a kidney for, uh, through Temple University Hospital. And I was simultaneously very happy for her. I praised God for it. But I was so disappointed that I wasn't able to be part of the process because I really uh, grew to love her. We developed a very strong connection, which we have to this day. And I wanted to be a part of that process. But 
what what got a you know she got the kidney and that's what mattered and that's you know that's why I was paired with her why I I did everything I could to get tested for her and get approved so I thank God for how that worked out so I got in touch with the pair kidney exchange coordinator at Georgetown explained the situation and said that Trina had gotten a kidney through Temple and they said well you can come into the hospital and you can donate altruistically uh, I said well I'll I'll definitely do that if I can't connect with someone else so. Uh, three months went by and, you know, Trina knew that I was looking to get connected with someone. So she told me about this, this woman uh, named Terry Patterson, who was actually going to Georgetown to get tested, um, to see if she was eligible to be placed there as a patient. Now that was important to me because I really didn't want to go to another facility and have to get tested there and get approved as a donor there on the off chance that I, for some reason, wouldn't be approved and I'd have to start the process and it would mess up things at Georgetown, you know? So I might, one of my stipulations is the person I really wanted to have them be at Georgetown where I was approved to donate. Um, so uh, it was good news when I found out that this woman was going to get tested and then she connected me with Terry. Uh, Trina did. And we spoke via uh, Facebook Messenger. And she told me, yeah, in over a month, I'm going to go there. I'm going to get tested. Everything works out. Then you can move forward and get tested for me um, if, if I get approved um, and I get placed there as a patient. So that ended up happening. Praise God. And um, so then I moved forward to get tested for her. So the first thing they did is they sent me a blood collection kit for blood work. And I had to have it drawn either at my the hospital that I'd been operating at or some other hospital or a lab. Now, at this point in time, this was May, June. So my eligibility as a donor at Georgetown, it, you have a year, they told me. So I had a year to donate or I'd had to start over with the testing process. So I told her, you know, I'm going to do my best to get tested for you. Um, but time is running short. So I'm hoping that things are going to be able to, to get moving in that direction. So I go to get my blood drawn and the hospital won't do it. That had never happened before, ever happened before. No matter, you know, as long as I had the right like requisition form, uh, the right the right information from the hospital, uh, I never had a problem having blood drawn. So then I asked them, where should I go to have blood drawn? They referred me to some labs in my area. I went there. I went to multiple labs. None of them would draw my blood either. They said, oh, we can't do it. It's a special kind of blood draw, which was odd because I'd done a, a, a similar kind of blood draw in the past. So I'm like, by this time, it's June. I'm like, I've just got to, I've got to go to the hospital and donate because I can't take a chance. I'm going to get disqualified. So I explained that to her, to Terry. And I said, I want to continue to work on getting tested for you, but my eligibility is running out and I don't want to miss out on this opportunity because I've been doing this for 10 years and this is God's will. I, I know it is. I have to do this, but I will find out a way that I can still help you. So when I got in touch with the pair kidney exchange coordinator and said, okay, I'm, I'm ready to come in and donate. Uh, she said, I said, but there's this woman that I connected with that I tried to get tested for and it didn't work out, but I still want to figure out a way to help her. How can I do that? And that's when I was introduced to the advanced donation program, otherwise known as the voucher program. And what that is, is that I agreed that once I donated my kidney through Georgetown University Hospital altruistic, altru altruistically to a kidney chain, she would then get a voucher. She would move to the top of the transplant list and then down the road within a shorter period of time, she would get a kidney. So I did that and we both had to sign a contract, but I was able to do that in July, July 30th to 2019. She got a, the voucher then was activated for her. And by December, she had gotten her kidney by the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. So, and that's an option for people. If people are interested, you can go to um, the advanced, the national kidney registry website, look into the advanced donation program. It's an awesome program. So that's my story in terms of the kidney donation. And then, like I said, a year later, I get tested. Everything works out in a matter of months, you know, within three months from, when, from the point when I contacted the hospital to get tested for my friend to donate uh, liver to him to when I don't to when the transplant surgery happened on November 12th or November 11th, 11th or 12th of 2020. It was like three months. So the Lord opened so many doors and I praise the Lord Jesus Christ for everything happened. He's yes, the reason I did it. It's not me. I'm just a vessel. <laughs> well, I'm glad you're a vessel. I'm glad you're a servant. I know how that is. Uh, he works through us. I'm definitely a vessel and a servant myself. 
I, I love the fact the idea that you did your homework. I love the fact that the idea that you went all, I mean, you took every chance and you you went out your way. You you did some of everything to get the thing on the ball and, 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 and going. Some people, you know, after one little thing go wrong, they stop, they quit, they get, look, I tried, I can't do it, or they're making it, you know, you didn't make up any excuse. Right. You didn't get too frustrated. You didn't quit. You didn't run, you know, and um, I, my, my hat all off to you, you know, you know, and everything that you stuck yeah. in there and you hung in there and looked out for a friend. Right. God knows and all things. So, you know, even though the person Amen. got there, uh, you know, got the, the organ and everything like that, that's that's amazing and that's that's beautiful. Now, how was your recovery from each one of the uh, transplants once, you know, they took your organ out? Great. Recovered very quickly from both surgeries. Um, there was, I would say, in a shorter period of time, there was more acute pain after the kidney transplant surgery than the liver, but there was more, I, I guess you say, a longer period of pain uh, with the liver transplant surgery. I was in the hospital for one day after the kidney transplant surgery. I was in the hospital for six days after the liver transplant surgery because I had to, a much more intensive procedure. It took a lot longer. You know, they, they took 70% of my liver. The liver has over 500 functions, a lot more than the kidney. As important as the kidney is, it has a lot more functions. It's a lot more intensive surgery because they have to dissect the liver and make sure, you know, they're cutting into blood vessels and everything that comes along with dissecting the liver. Whereas with the kidney, they're just removing it. Uh, the liver is also larger so than the kidney. So it's, you know, and then, then transplanting it into the other person and he's doing well by the grace of God. But yeah, I mean, I, the re the rehabilitation, uh, the bounce back for me was relatively quick. They told me, um, after I donated the liver, okay, you're going to experience a lot of fatigue. Uh, you're not going to feel like yourself like three months, X, Y, and Z. You're going to have to take a lot of naps. Yeah. I experienced some fatigue, but nothing like they prepared me for. So it was, underwhelming actually. And I praise God for that. Uh, you know, it's like, I, I believe, I really believe I was meant to donate both organs because I've never smoked. I've never drank. I've never taken a drug. I've never taken any mood or mind altering substances, you know, and I believe that was the Lord preparing me from the time of my birth up until when I did what I did for his glory to do these things. Um, you know, so I praise God for how everything yeah, worked out. And, uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. That yeah, it was temple. Amazing. That's yeah. beautiful. He kept yeah. that temple. Now, did anybody ever try to talk you out of it? Sometimes when your family or friends hear, um, I'm gonna do this, and they go, Oh, what? Don't do that, or you know, yeah, you know, you know, you might die under the knife, or you know, you might not come out the same, or it's wrong to do, or it's a religious thing, or anything. Did anybody ever try to talk you out of doing this? Yeah, family did. Family did with the kidney because because I started when I was in my early 20s. I was 23 uh, when I started this, and I actually was trying to go overseas to donate to a, a four-year-old. Uh, that's when this all started uh, back in 2009, uh, but the Lord didn't open the door for me to do that. I did get a passport because I was trying to do that out of the process, you know, out of the situation. So that was good because I ended up using that to go to India by God's grace, but that's another story. But yeah, family tried to talk me out of it throughout the entire process. <laughs> and uh, finally, at the end, my parents did come around because they could see I was serious. You know, it took them a while, but I'm their baby. I'm the youngest son. That three three sons, I'm the youngest. They're concerned. You know, they're like, well, what if one of your in, 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 typical objections or kind of kind of the theoretical type of stuff? Well, what if what if this what if you have kids? What if you have what if you get married and your wife needs it? What if you have kids and they need your kidney? What if one of us needs it? I'm like, well, I don't operate in the theoretical. You guys don't need it. I'm not married. I don't have kids. There's no guarantee I'm ever going to get married and have kids as much as I may want to. That that may not be God's will. So there are people right now that are dying that are in need of a kidney. And I have a perfectly good one. I have two perfectly good ones. And you can live a perfectly healthy life. And I'm proof positive that I knew this ahead of time because there are people that I knew donated and they live perfectly healthy lives with one kidney. This was before I donated. And also people born with one kidney that live perfectly healthy lives. So I knew that you have more than enough, more than enough kidney function with one kidney, let alone with two. 
that I knew in my research leading up to the transplant surgery. So if you guys are listening, please get tested. Please connect with Lisa or connect with me. You can go through the Compassion Match website or the Facebook page. I do interviews as well. Um, and we'll connect you with people that are in need of a kidney transplant. You know, don't wait. And I just want to say this. Don't wait until you die. You know, sign the back of your license. And then when you die, then you give your organs to people. And you can do it right now and live a perfectly healthy life. And it's one of the best things you can do. And I give God all the glory, but I'm so happy that he allowed me to do this because I was able by his grace to save a couple of people's lives. And there's nothing better than that, you know. And again, I'm just happy that I can show Christ's love. I don't think I would have. And, I, and, you know, this is just my opinion. I don't think if if it wasn't for Christ, I wouldn't have spent 10 and a half years pursuing it. He gave me the strength to continue to move forward because I knew it was God's will. I just knew that in the marrow of my bones, that it was his will to continue to pursue this, no matter what disappointments, frustrations, ups and downs I dealt with. You know, like you said, sister, right. um, there was, you know, after the first time, a lot of people will give up. When we, when Trina and I were at Temple, they gave me every reason to want to give up because they gave me the runaround. They didn't return my calls. The testing when I went to the facility in January of 2018 was, excuse my language, half-assed, big time. They didn't get all the testing done. They let me go early. And then I they were messing around and dilly-dallying dilly dallying with me coming back and doing my uh, mental health evaluation, psychiatric evaluation. And they just, they didn't. And then they told her after we had, that's why we shifted our focus to Georgetown because they were messing around. And we both decided we can't wait anymore. Uh, Cause we started it in September, the process in September of 2017. And it was like April, May when, by the time we said this, we're not making any progress here. So we shifted our focus to Georgetown because she was listed at four or five different uh, as a patient of four or five different hospitals and Georgetown immediately got the ball rolling and they were awesome. But she ironically got the kidney through temple, you know? And so I praise God for that, but it just, it was dealing with them was a nightmare. And I, I just, I hated dealing with them because they acted like she didn't matter. And I didn't matter. Well, I'm, glad, and, I'm glad the nightmare didn't kill your dream. You know no, what I mean? Because some nightmares right. can kill right. a dream Makes in a minute. Absolutely. You know? That's right. Now, you, Compassion Match. Yes. Tell us about that. Okay. Praise God. So I, I didn't want to stop at just donating my kidney because I started it after I donated my kidney, not knowing, even though I wanted to, because my desire was to donate my kidney, liver, and bone marrow. And I'm still on the quest to donate bone marrow. That's a different situation. You know, they got to get in touch with you. You can't really pursue that other than sending in a cheek swab. You know, then they contact you if you're a match for someone. And I'm in a couple databases. But I wanted to donate after the kidney. I want to donate liver. It just so happened that my friend, he was in need. But so I started Compassion Match after I donated the kidney to, because I wanted to do more than just donate. I wanted to help people in need of a kidney transplant find their donor. And I was inspired by you, by Steve Belcher, by Jared Brown and Jeffrey Brown and all the folks who are part of this network uh, to start doing interviews with people. You know, not just sharing posts from you guys, but doing interviews um, and giving people a platform to advocate for themselves, which is very empowering because, you know, you have a lot of other people advocating for you or hopefully. You know, they'll, they'll have people advocating for them like Jared and Jeffrey Brown and you and and Steve Belcher do a wonderful job of doing that. And yeah, yeah mm -hmm. they do an awesome job with the animation and the kidney blogs and all of that stuff. But this gives people an opportunity to advocate for themselves, which is very empowering. And I think it gives them more hope, you know, and it well, says yeah. hope. Before, yeah. The Bible says hope. Before it makes, yeah. I just want to say this Bible says hope yeah. deferred makes. I like that. Sit. But when it returns, it's a tree of life. So when, when you get it, it's a tree of life. So that hope is very important. And I think that's what I was able to help. I'll say that Trina sticking with her, even though I didn't help her get the kidney, I gave her hope that she would get it. And that gave that helped her to move forward and then get the kidney through temple. So that hope is very important. So praise God. Um, and that that's why I started Compassion Match. Right. And, now, and now it's also it includes helping liver people with liver disease find a liver, a living liver donor as well. When, what time does it come on? T talk about the time, uh, the sure. website, email and things of that nature. 
Absolutely. So with Compassion Match, I, with the interviews, it's whenever it works for the people. I don't have a set time and day because I work around people's schedules. Okay. So I do have a program tomorrow scheduled. We're supposed to do it, I believe, at 2 p.m., 2 p.m. And, um, you know, you can go to the Compassion Match Facebook page and check it out. And it's just whenever it works for the person that I contact. I, I, need, I try to work around their schedule because I know they have dialysis and they have things going on. So I ad, do my best to advertise in advance and just trust that the Lord is going to bring who he's going to bring. And then it's archived so people can watch it later. I have the Facebook page. I'm, I'm working on building a website right now. Um, and it's going to be this is I'm putting people's profiles and their information that I share um, during the interviews. Uh, the people I've already interviewed, I'm putting their profiles on here. The the type, the same inter information that I share during the interviews, like their name, their date of birth, their blood type, the name of the hospital, the contact name of the person they call that a person needs to call to get the testing started, as well as the phone number and a picture of them and a link to contact those people. So that's one of the things I'm doing right now. Um, and I'll have a bunch of other information on here, all the information about living donation, what the testing process entails, the surgery, you know, financial aid, traveling around. If you got to travel outside of your state or city to go to a, a facility to get tested, all that type of stuff like, the, the, you know, facts about chronic kidney disease and end stage renal disease and stuff like that. That's also um, going to be on there. But my ultimate goal right now is to get a website started that. Uh, connects people like a dating website where you put up a profile and a donor and a recipient can connect that way. And, uh, you know, that's something in, that's in the works right now, but yep, that, that's what I'm doing with compassion match and, uh, anything, anything else, compassion match, sister Patricia, uh, just writing compassion match. And it's right there on Facebook. Yep. Oh, looks like you froze sister. Yeah. So praise God, guys. Um, well, Lisa works on getting that worked out. Uh, yeah. Again, if you're in need of a kidney transplant, uh, you, you know, you need a kidney, you're looking for a living kidney, a donor kidney, because those last longer when transplanted and they're healthier, you can get in touch with me. I'll set up whatever day and time works for you. I'll work around your schedule and I'll give you that opportunity to come on, tell your story, make an appeal to someone um, out there to people out there uh, to come forward and get tested for you. And the more people that get tested, it increases your your chances of getting or the opportunity for you to find a living kidney donor and uh, to receive that, that life-saving kidney. So you see it on the screen, just look it up, Compassion Match, you'll find it. And soon I'll have that website up and running. And yeah, and anything I can help you guys with, I'm happy to do that. I praise God for the platform he's given me. Um, and, you know, Sister Patricia, if you're still watching, um, I'd be happy to interview you because I've seen your posts, the posts that people have made. And, and I've shared some of your posts, uh, I believe. Yeah, I have. Um, so I'd be happy to set up a day and time to, to do that for you, to give you that opportunity. So, yeah, it's, it's just a privilege to advocate for people. It's a privilege to do these interviews. It's a privilege to come on here on Lisa back on the Lisa ba on the Lisa Baxter show, excuse me. And uh, she's such a wonderful person. And brother Steve Belcher, you know, go to his website, um, UrbanKidneyAlliance.com, and purchase the book he wrote about outpatient hemodialysis. It's awesome. Uh, it's on the homepage. If you go to the homepage, you can find the the book. Go to the all, you know check out his entire website. It's packed filled with great information, and. Yeah, I, I've uh, benefited from it. And and the intro of every one of my interviews, I always show his website to promote Steve's work because he's doing awesome work in the urban community uh, to educate uh, black communities about their need uh, to take care of themselves, about the epidemic of chronic kidney disease in, in the black community and among non-white people or minorities collectively, uh, but in particular, the black community. He's doing a wonderful job and a wonderful work. So support his work, go to his website, share his website, buy his book, share information about his book on social media, uh, do whatever you can. Um, and also, if you're in need of a kidney transplant, um, I've started to make TikTok videos for, for people uh, where you record a one-minute video, 
you give the details about your story, who people need to contact in, in terms of people coming forward and getting tested. You send it to me. I will edit it, add music to it, put text on the screen, and I'll upload it to TikTok. And I've done that for one person so far, and they've gotten hundreds of views, and they've gotten a lot of uh, support. Uh, hopefully someone or multiple people have come forward to get tested because uh, I've provided the uh, contact information for their hospital. So I don't know who's going to come forward and get tested unless they let me know. But you never know. Uh, and what inspired me to do that was a post that Jonathan Trailer, he's another wonderful guy, Hope with Jonathan, wonderful guy. Check out his show on Facebook as well. But he, I believe it was he who shared a post about a woman finding her donor through TikTok by putting up TikTok videos. So, so that that's another uh, avenue to advocate for yourself. And uh, yeah, praise the Lord. Hey, what's hey. going on, Nick? Appreciate that. Yeah, no problem, brother. I'm happy to do it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And leaving that is down, so she won't be back on. Uh, she's working on a situation. Sure. But Nick, man, it's good to see you and I appreciate yes, you yes. holding it down and everything that you're doing with Compassion Match. Amen. Yeah, I, I, I praise the Lord that he's given me the opportunity and the platform to help people in need as much as I can. And, uh, you know, a lot is in the works and I'm just taking it one day at a time and I know great things are ahead. I know you're doing great things. I know the Brown brothers are doing great things. Lisa, Hope with Jonathan, Jonathan Trailer's doing great things. So we all have to support each other, support each other's work because we're all in this together with the same goal. Um, and uh, I just thank, thank you for having me on the network again. It's been a privilege and uh, yeah, praise the Lord Jesus Christ. All right, Nick. Thanks, man. Appreciate you coming on. We talking yeah. soon. Okay, brother. God bless. Thank All right, you. God bless you, man. Take care. You too. All right. Sorry for the interruption. We'll see you next week. Thank you. God bless. This is the Lisa Baxter Show, giving you the four one one in the kidney one.